Hunter x Hunter episode 134. Oh yes, we are no we're no different from the ants. Do you know who the real Chimera ant is? Oh, oh wow. And then humanity. In hindsight, it was kind of a, a clue that this arc started off in NGL. We were so focused on the ants. Well, I'll speak for myself. I'm like, oh yeah, it's, you know, based on North Korea. Not giving a second thought to it because it's just so lifelike. Or it's something I've known about for a long time, whereas the Chimera ants were a new threat in the story. But yeah, it was right there in front of my nose the entire time. Whoa! We're not shying away from it at all. And then pollution. I see. The, the contrast. Oh, that's good, right? <laughs> the idols we like. Oh, I see. Affluence. Callous, callous humans. I see. So in this case, radiation is poison. Oh, they themselves become poisonous. It ended up being fox die after all. Not from poof. Yeah, there's no metric. There's no way to combat against it. There's nothing that you can do. There's no merit to it. There's no possible redemption from it. If the king is in fact infected with the poison, it doesn't really matter if he chooses love for Kamuki and his better nature. It's only destruction. There's no counterbalance. You can't try again. You can't go away. You can't try. I can't see this intro the same anymore. I'm sorry. All of you have cancer. I'm thinking about it, but nothing comes to mind as an example of a bigger sucker punch in terms of the arc and where you think it might go or could go or hope it goes. Like I said last episode, it's extremely upsetting and it's also surprising to find out that it actually it's been over logistically for quite some time. The montage is really interesting and as you might imagine, it left me with some mixed feelings. Having watched the show up to this point, I'm fairly convinced that the author would not take a black and white view on humanity like this is the summation of what humanity is. It feels more to me like an exploration of the depths of one side. That said, I think some of the mixed feelings I had about it were me imagining what I think would be a reaction or maybe what is a common sentiment that is evoked by these sort of images, which is sort of this dichotomy of good, bad, kind of framed against affluent, non-affluent. I think under real close scrutiny, good and evil, the beauty of humanity, the dark side of humanity is not a material issue. Personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with affluence. In fact, I think if things are going right, ideally it's a sign that you've contributed a lot, that you've done really good in the world, though obviously that's not always the case. I also don't think there's anything wrong necessarily with celebrating good moments, even with the knowledge that there is terrible suffering in the world. I can even make the argument that that kind of oversimplified dichotomy of, you know, us, them, is actually a contributor to this sort of evil. It's really complicated and it really depends. I mean, I think one of the images that was most resonant for me in terms of the evil is that it's very easy for someone with no skin in the game who bears no risk to see a benefit to someone else's downfall. People you can't see in other places are sort of this objectified other. They don't really have faces. They have no real emotional weight. But it's that very thing. It's that well, that's those people. There's also the idea that, yeah, you, you don't want to shy away from any kind of truth. It's good to explore everything in its full depth. You don't want to shield yourself from the worst elements of, of life or the fact that people are really suffering. At the same time, energy devoted to thinking about the suffering of others is not aiding the suffering of others, even if it might feel that way. In fact, if I were to be really critical, I would say it's self-indulgent. It's selfish. It's just yet another way to feel good about oneself, which does nothing for anyone. It's kind of funny to think about because this show from the beginning has been clear about the fact that it rejects binary choices or binary outlooks. So this idea or practice that you do good by identifying who the villains are and pointing at them, I would argue is actually at best neutral and probably a function or tool of the things that lead to evil. The word X is X that someone. That's an interesting title. That's what got you, P. How long for the king? Must have said something. Wait, did we miss the conversation? Oh! When he told him the truth? I'm getting that feeling again, Poof. I get sometimes when you talk to me. Oh, they haven't had it yet. Okay. I'm Poof's already dead at this point. I mean, he doesn't have to do anything.
It reminds me of the line I just saw in Invincible, where a character is accused of lying, and he's like, oh no, I was lying before, now I'm telling the truth. <laughs> it's unclear for Poof because his loyalty is the king, but it'll all come down to his interpretation of what's best for the king, which could still mean secrecy. Yokaro. God, imagine the terror and hope simultaneously. Like, if you think the king has a limited lifespan, but you know he can reach you in seconds. Wow. Looks beautiful. There's no real hiding him. The fact that he could even sense, like, inanimate things. It's almost like he becomes light when he uses that. I've fought UP. Or I threatened UP. I mean, his crutches and casts and bullet holes kind of answer the question for him. God, I was sort of hoping we wouldn't see it, but there it is. Right, right, right. Yeah, well, it's a great danger. Stop it. Get the tail. He's being very patient these days. He's terrifying. Which means he also knows everything Poof's thinking. You should realize that. He's using it without using it. It's just his base, base state, like breathing. <laughs> Well, he may be unrivaled. I like how they made him more beautiful and cute in Poof's mind, right? They gave him a cute little glow up. <laughs> That's a real thing. People just look better when you love them. He knows. He can feel it. It's a terrible image. He might not even care. He's such a non-threat. He means that. Poof, we just sacrificed his own life here. This is an interesting way to play this. You'll break the rules of our game. Hiding it alive with the truth. Clever. We've definitely seen that in the show before. I mean, it was probably Poof. Wolfen has no idea what's going on. Yeah, Kago and Pom just have Wolfen out to die, unknowingly. You want it to be someone. Again? Come on now, Welfin. <laughs> no. This is so much delusion. Happens. You get that all on your own. Yeah, because, you know, before meeting Akago, wealth and just the bastion of emotional stability. You can always count on wealth and for a level head. At this point, it's out of your hands, and your, your best hope is just being yourself and being a, a lack of a threat. No pressure. I think you just don't say anything. I mean, anyway, the king's reading your mind. It's been a long time coming. I was wondering when his patience was going to run out. Without an answer? Wow. It's already been decided. Wow, 
It's like Gunji. The outcome was probably determined long before the outcome was determined. Poof just didn't see it. I've long suspected that the king would be the one to kill Poof. I think it'd be really cool, and I feel it's more possible than ever that the king might spare him. <laughs> This is yet another skull in this episode. I don't think there was ever any question about that. It's a very <laughs> pure love, pure for something, pure towards something. This is a big moment for the king. Yeah. Oh god, that's so sad. That's so sad now. We get more evidence that the king can be great, but it's already been decided. Whoops. What could you- what do you even do? <laughs> what do you even do in this situation? It's the foregone conclusion. Oh, he got the Nav treatment, but also got eaten. At the last minute. If he lives from this, it'll be a great experience. <laughs> Maybe he'll die of old age, though, before it happens. This is so beautifully conceptualized, all these visuals. That's your last point of leverage. Wow. Wow, wow. Finally. God, this is so beautiful. Who came up with this, the design for all these things, for all these shots? It hurts. The king receiving the light. King just projecting a new physical reality. Maybe, maybe this is changed for Poof too. Poof. And if the king is really becoming what I think he's becoming, this makes him love Poof, not hate Poof. Even disagreeing with it, even not liking it. You ever have that moment where you, you know, maybe there's something about your upbringing or your past or just whatever, people you know, that was bad. You know, it was really bad for simplicity's sake. That's what you've arrived at. It was bad. And then suddenly you realize, wow, that was the best they could do at that moment. And their application was so warped, maybe even to despicable levels. But at the heart of it was something that they desired with all their heart. Whatever you can say about it, it wasn't apathy. It wasn't coldness. It, it was deep, genuine, for lack of a better word, desire. And love was in there somewhere. It just did not come out correctly. It got filtered through something that was not what was actually good. But going all the way into that, you realize that there was something really beautiful there. And that the lack of understanding in the way it matters most in this present moment was in you. That's sort of the feeling I'm getting right now for Poof. Poof is just a disaster of a person. He's so conniving and manipulating and selfish, but God does he care. There's that idea I love about how the opposite of love isn't hate, but indifference. I haven't really thought this through, but maybe if you go deep enough into any emotion, anytime someone is like deeply affected by someone else, there is something beautiful there, even if the beauty is obfuscated by the multitude of false beliefs or terrible experiences that have befallen someone. That also I think works partially as a counter to the look at how terrible humanity is. It's like, have you really gone all the way through to the other side? I can almost see it represented physically where instead of, you know, humanity's good and humanity's evil being at two polar extremes on the line, it's more like the good actually is beyond the bad. It's through it on the other extreme. Kingdom Hearts is light, etc. Which doesn't necessarily mean that's the most important thing. I think what largely saves Poof is that as far as the king's concerned, there is no real fallout yet. There's no damage or irreversible damage that's occurred yet. So it's just Poof being Poof and there's still a chance. Perhaps it's once that manifests into something that has real permanent effects that it becomes a tragedy. This is a re repentance for Poof, right? This is him understanding. I think we can all see it. What would be the point anyway? It doesn't solve anything. It doesn't help anything. It would just be ego to kill him. 
<laughs> the more this goes on, like I said, the worse this gets. All these beautiful things happening in their final moments. You know what would be a really embarrassing outcome that I'm sort of anticipating now? Because he could just see everything, he just goes to Kamugi and he just immediately knows where Kamugi is. And he's like, why did you put her in a box? What was the point of this? So many things are made ridiculous by his clairvoyance. <laughs> Some of these sentences, if you look at them in isolation, are just hilarious. Kamugi is in the underground warehouse with the woman and the octopus. It, it really feels like a spiritual enlightenment. There's something higher he's answering to. Like, why? Why kill anyone? In fact, it's, it's counter nature. Who cares? I wish you the best. Wishing your enemies the best is the ultimate, ultimate win. Ultimate own, if it's genuine. He's too good for this world. He's the best of us. Now he's truly deserving of being king. Now he's overcome both. He surpassed both. He's neither. That's <laughs> funny how like the skills have changed so much. Like even saying he's wavering between human and ant, you know, he's wavering between a nothing and a nothing. He has become a god. Finally, not the Xerxes type god of, you know, I am right because I have a big army or a powerful nan or whatever it was. No, I'm king because I am the most awakened and tuned into universal value. This is the saddest episode for me so far of the show. Even though it's glorious, even though it's great and so inspiring, the timing is awful. <laughs> I've been asking where is light going to come from? Well, that also was in plain sight. It's the character called Light, but the darkness has sort of already won. In a way, again, this sort of light, it's not Miriam. It's not exclusive to him. It's a capability of humanity. It's probably accessible by every individual. It's not something that can be claimed. It's something that is always available and can be tapped into. But here it is. I have so many mixed feelings because it's such a, a flood of relief. Like, okay, here it is. Finally, we found it. This is the beauty. But it's like, now it's such a terrible loss of potential, which like in my personal ideology, I think actually is a very important component of what forms the baseline of anything that might resemble an objective morality or code of ethics for the world and for humanity, if there is one. So in a very real sense, that that is human evil personified. To make a very simple argument for that, it's like there are plenty of ways in which humans and animals use destruction or killing as a means that we don't really concern ourselves with that much. However, we, and I would argue a lot of other species, are very aware and very reactive to unnecessary needless destruction or killing. It's like how a lot of animals won't actually kill each other. They'll have like a killing simulation, you know, they'll fight or they'll spar or whatever, or they'll even just, you know, posture and size up because there's something at stake. They need to determine who will win, who will get access to whatever, food or mate or what have you. But even animals who are not really thinking about higher morality have it encoded in them that it's better not to have needless destruction and killing, where you can just determine the outcome of the battle without having the negative destruction of the battle. Sort of like how we have conventions for war. You think like if it's war, it's just war, right? It's just whatever, it doesn't matter. We have some built-in are for the importance of these things. And this is like the greatest loss of potential. We have the benefit of knowing the outcome here and that like, God, Netero's decision, it becomes a tragedy. I also haven't thought this through really, but it's almost like that whole, the famous line in Batman Superman, where he's like, if there's any chance that he could destroy the world, we have to treat it as an absolute certainty. That sort of minority report approach to people and their lives and what they'll become. The idea that you must destroy something before it can become power powerful enough to become your enemy. Not to trivialize it, it's very complicated. There are logistical considerations there, but given the way this has played out is heartbreaking.